Colorado, home to some of the finest trout streams and rivers in the lower 48, and home to some of the best fly tires as well. In the next few minutes, we'll visit with these artists as they create their signature fly patterns. We'll also join them as they fish Rocky Mountain National Park, the Frying Pan, the South Platte, the Arkansas, and the Colorado. Fly tying is part craft and part magic. Binding bits of hair, fur, and feathers to a hook in an attempt to create something that will fool a trout requires a keen sense of observation. The best tires are also avid fishermen who have a thorough knowledge of the life cycle of all of the various things that trout eat and who have spent hours observing trout in their natural habitat. Each of the master tires profiled in this show have made great contributions to their craft as creators of flies that fool trout. Flies that are designed to deceive. Rocky Mountain Park is my favorite place to fish just because it's close. It took us about 45 minutes to get up here. Uh, and it only takes that much time to get home. So you can come up here and fish the morning and be home in time for lunch. It's pretty good. Or you can leave after lunch and fish till dark if you can last that long. Hi, I'm AK Best and I am a professional fly tire. People seem to like the fingerprint I put on my flies. Every tire has a style. I oftentimes uh, go to the stream and the first thing I'll do is look in the bushes, look in the spider webs, see what was hatching last night. And I take photos of those. If I can't find that, I'll net the water. If there's no hatch, then I have to just wait till I see something. What you oftentimes you can find in backwaters or little eddies off to the side, you can see what's been going on. We better get him back. Go home. I'm gonna tie a fly that's become a favorite of mine in the last few years called a winged beetle. I tie them mostly in size 14. A bigger fly, when you're talking about terrestrial, seems to get the trout attention quicker. The key to starting this fly is to get the smallest amount of dubbing. You can see that's not much. Notice what this does to the thread. It doubled the size. We want to create a little ball down here, no bigger than the hook eye. Try to make it as round as you can. That looks pretty good. So for the wing tips, I'm going to use a pair of Dunn dyed hen hackle. And I'm just going to use the tips. There they are. Don't worry about the stubs, the butts sticking up here. Those are going to get covered up, so you don't even have to worry about cutting those off. So once you get them tied on in the right spot, you put your thumbnail back here and push forward and they'll spread out almost, almost in spinner wing shape. It's important that they are both absolutely horizontal. And we got lucky that time. They're both pretty good. The next thing we're going to do is tie in a little strip of, of a leather product called bug skin. Now we want to create enough dubbing under here. We're going to tie in what, what amounts to a, a fat fatter donut back here. It'll create the hump when I pull that forward. It creates the outline of the beetle shell. Then we're going to take a length of black saddle, clip away the fibers until you get to a bare quill. Don't strip them off. When you strip fibers off a hackle, it always takes a little bit of the quill with it and weakens it. With this fly, it doesn't matter which side of the hackle is up, shiny or dull. We're going to palmer it forward later. Now we're going to add some more dubbing. It doesn't have to be quite so firm because when we palmer this hackle forward, I want to bury the quill in the softer underbody.
So the next thing we're going to do is take this hackle and palmer it forward in about four or five turns. There's three, four, it off there, hold the thread out of the way and get those trapped hackles. And then we're going to come over the top and clip everything off the top. Now we're ready to complete the fly. We'll fold this forward. And here's a little trick. We don't want a wrinkle to appear right where my thumbnail is. So we're going to turn it towards me and hold that edge next to the hook. That should prevent a wrinkle. Now we need to cut this off. The problem is, if we go in straight with our scissors like this and cut it off, we're going to leave two ears. So what we do is we come in from the far side and cut up towards the center at about a 45 degree, and then in come from this side and get it, trim off anything, and then cover those little ears with thread. And now it's a neater looking fly. And then lip finish. How many turns in a whip finish? I've said this a zillion times. Enough to cover up all your mistakes. Now, we're not quite done. We got all this hackle hanging down underneath. So we're going to turn the hook over, turn the vise over, and so I can get at it. Now you see I can get in there and clip everything off the bottom. Trouble is, you have to be very careful that you put the scissors in here absolutely level with the bottom or you'll have more legs on one side than the other. An old toothbrush is a good tool to get rid of the loose fibers. Now you can go back and see, get the ones you think you missed. So there's the wing beetle. Little head locker on it. Ready to go. I'm just, uh, I'm still in awe about the success I've had as a fly tire. Uh, you know, I'm just an Iowa farm boy who learned, who taught himself how to tie flies, mostly by breaking all the so-called rules that you're supposed to use. <laughs> but I figured out ways of tying flies uh, that were easier for me. And the end product looked more like the natural than the ones I could buy in the store. So I think that is the aspect that people like about my flies. They look more like the naturals. I love fishing this little creek because I've never come up here and not caught anything. And uh, I'm old enough now to know that I've caught probably all the big fish I'm ever gonna catch in my life. And now it's just fun to smell my hand at the end of the day and say, well, that could have been a 27-incher. It smells alike, whether it's 7 or 27. It's just fun to do this. Happy little fish. <laughs>